no like black riders. I was like, we're the only black riders, just us and Cool Disco Dan. I was like, what the fuck? I mean, it's like when all reality just hits you. You know what I mean? I don't know. Like when, um, well, when you find out the Earth is round, you find out that your mother and your father actually had sex. You know what I mean? And then you find out that all the riders in DC are white. I was, I was blown away. And they would talk about all these shows, and they would use all these words. They would say stuff like AUP. And I was like, what the fuck is AUP? You know what I mean? And they were like, art under pressure. I was like, it's a, a, a bluegrass band. Like, what the fuck is that? You know what I mean? They were talking about the tunnel. And so we were all existing in the same world, right? But we had no idea about each other. We had no idea about the lifestyles or uh, colloquialisms of each other, you know what I mean? DC segregated the shit, man. So we had no idea. The early 90s was the shit, but the mid and late 90s was when the writers were just going for it in DC. You had mad people. You had daggone um, Cram, Care, Cert, daggone SNK was rocking. All these cats were like straight rocking. There were events going on, graph events. There was um, walls popping up all over the place. Street walls, illegals, all this shit. People were bombing their ass off. And I was in prison for, for a, a little stretch. And, that, and when I came home, it was like the best pieces and the, you know, really good artists were, were down with dot com and it, it has spread out. The dot com work was literally like popping off the wall at you. For me, like a piece stood off the wall. They didn't really, you know, whereas like a lot of the table pieces I saw, they were just kind of flat and everything. For me, when I would see a dot com piece or production, you know, it wasn't just, there was more depth and dimension to it. And there was nobody else, you know, around that was really doing that, or at least around here. There was like a real community going on, like, like a straight up, like community, like downtown and suburban had all washed together. about DC is that it had the whole separation between go-go and hip-hop. I, I love DC to death, but I was also an outsider over there because I wrote with you. And everybody in DC was like, that's some New York shit. Why don't you go the fuck back to New York? What? Fuck that, yo, I'm getting busy. So here's your future. So here's your future. So here's your future. That's what I'm saying. It's like some people can rock down and some people can rock up. And leaving a little room for background shit wouldn't be. Graph is taking me, like, if you want to look at it that way, Graph's yeah. taking me all over the world. Sporadic pandemonium. Through my travels worldwide, I've written Graph in Caribbean, Europe. Asia, motherfucking cut dust tags in Africa if that counts. Because so I was in Italy, right? I was living over there for like a year. And you know, they got like slow food over there, like paninis and you know, they love bottled water. I was getting dehydrated all the time. All I would drink was Coca-Cola. Because water is disgusting. Water is like the worst shit ever. But it's like, once I found Perrier, I was like, shit. My name, I'm um, my name's Demon 202. I grew up in D.C. like, just like Chappelle and all them, right around when crack happened, you know what I mean? So stuff was just ridiculous, you know what I mean? But um, I was born and raised over by Howard University, right downtown. Most of his family were all artists. His mother was an artist. His father taught art in, in, um, at Howard University. His mother used to do a lot of art shows. Like right around when crack was reaching his zenith, my mom was like, alright, fuck this, we're out. And so we bounced. And thus began my two-year purgatory, hard time in the suburbs. And it was the worst experience of my life. It was like, it sucked. It sucked, it sucked going from Howard University, all black university, you know what I mean? Like growing up, 
Uh, parents work there, so I'm just like, you know, hanging out with these college kids, you know what I mean? You know, I was like, what, like uh, seven, little kid. And then going all the way out to Silver Spring, Maryland. Blue, man. And so I was like the only black dude in a three mile radius or whatever. Kids coming up to me asking me if I was from Africa and shit. You know what I mean? That's, I swear to God, I want to punch that little girl to this day. I hated white people so much during them two years, but I got over it. Suffice it to say, the 80s fucking sucked for me because my mom was determined, you know, to keep us away from the crap. So I got out of there and uh, went to live with my grandparents back in D.C. And that was the shit because um, that's when I started writing graph and that shit was dope. I remember, the, I remember what got me into graph too. We was watching B Street, my mom and everybody. And um, I was like, yo, they're paying on subway cars. I was like, fuck that shit. Give me a subway car, you know what I mean? Worries. So I made a subway car in my backyard out of a big chunk of cardboard and just took these big fat marks and just went to town. I was doing sneakers, skylines, you know, the old, the black skyline with the windows, they're all yellow, you know what I mean? It's like, cause you know, when you're a kid, yellow means light. He was a little weird, I ain't gonna lie. But for the most part, he was cool. I met Mouse one day up at Duke. Uh, he was right. You know, he was, he was busting tags and stuff. Yeah, my boys were telling me it's a new dude that does graffiti. EBO started um, with me and Mouse. Uh, EBO was our little crew. This is first year of high school, basically. Down in D.C., going to like Duke Ellington. So I was like up in the art school, and it was, uh, I was just like, yo, I'm writing. D.C. is go-go to death. It's go-go forever. And we were like the hip-hop kids up at Duke. We didn't really fit the, the whole graffiti uh, look and all that, or with, you know, who you would think does graffiti. I had this whole image of the writer in my head, because, you know, I never lived in New York, never lived in Philly. I, th I thought all the writers were black. You said, like, 92. We started hitting the wall of fame. That was our first spot. So I'd go down the tunnel, and I had all in my image who all these cats were. And then I came down there one day, and the like, mad, mad cats were painting. I was like, wow, they look like some real 90210 cats. They don't even have vowels in their names. Straight up, you could always tell where a writer in D.C. came from. The suburban writers had names like <laughs> 1, S-E-K, you know, and you were supposed to say it. You know, like, <laughs> yo, can you have some bass up in that motherfucker? Mouse, you know, demon. E-B-O, you know what I mean? Like the B, the fat, fat letters, you know, like bass. Started being cool with a lot of these cats that were actually coming down there, these suburban continent riders, right? You know, that was kind of cool. That was a world that I've never seen, you know what I mean? And it kind of, hanging out with these cats kind of blew my mind. Before we knew him, he was like a monster, a, a ghost or something, you know what I'm saying? He was just that guy you've seen up, but you didn't know, you know what I'm saying? He could have been a, a six foot seven monster. You know, he was that to us, you know? Demon did a fair amount of traditional graffiti, and that was stuff that you could see at Lafont Plaza, but it started to transform. He took less colors, but creating three-dimensional objects popping off the wall. It was something that was never done down on Lafont. A lot of really good graffiti painted down there. That was the best. He kind of perfected uh, from the years. You know, I saw his growth. I saw how we started out, how it was flat at first, and then how uh, he started getting more in the shading. And I saw, I saw him perfect. Probably one of the strongest forces in DC graffiti at the time. And he was definitely influential across the board, just in terms of style and of overall freshness of the things that he did. And I was just like fucking dedicated, you know what I mean? I started to just live and breathe this shit, you know what I mean? It's like I was painting every motherfucking day. And so, you know, people can't really keep up their pace. 